Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, along with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will break down the central dogma of protein synthesis. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our online circuit for today is, I can construct an estimation of how structures of DNA and RNA lead to the expression of information within the cell via the process of replication, transcription, and translation. In today's video, we will start off by completing an overview of the central dogma of protein synthesis. Next, we will explain the steps of protein synthesis starting with replication, transcription, and then translation. Then we will complete an overall review just to make sure you get it, you got it, and you good. So what is the central dogma? That's an excellent question. The central dogma explains the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA to make a protein. The central dogma states that DNA contains all the information needed to make proteins and that RNA is a mixture that carries this information to the ribosome to make all of our proteins. Central dogma states that the flow of information from DNA to protein starts off with DNA being made from assistant DNA through DNA replication, then from DNA to RNA during transcription, and then from RNA to make new proteins during translation. So let's begin with DNA replication. First, during DNA replication, two semi-conservative DNA molecules are made during the processes of initiation, elongation, and termination. For more of these processes, check out our video link above. But for now, we will keep it nice and brief. First, the strands of a DNA molecule are separated. Second, two new strands are synthesized by matching the base pairs of the separated DNA strands. Adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine. The end result is two new daughter DNA molecules. They call these DNA molecules semi-conservative because these molecules consist of one new and one old chain of nucleotide bases that make up DNA. In DNA replication, adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine, so A to T and G to C. For example, if one side of a DNA strand consists of TAC, TTC, AAA, ATC, the other side of the DNA strand will consist of ATG, AAG, TTT, TAG. Next, we move on to transcription, which is the process of making an RNA copy of the DNA gene sequence that we just replicated. Second, during transcription, like we just stated, the message from DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA, also known as mRNA. And it's important to know that RNA does not contain thymine, but it contains uracil instead. So the thymine is going to get replaced by uracil when transcribing the DNA to RNA. Let's use the top part of our DNA strand from DNA replication as a guide. The TAC, TTC, AAA, ATC will now be transcribed into AUG, AAG, UUU, UAG. Notice that the T's or thymine that the A would normally bond with were replaced by the U's or uracil because remember, RNA does not contain thymine. This is a very important step for a couple of reasons. First, the DNA must be transcribed to continue protein synthesis. And second, DNA is too large to leave the nucleus, but RNA is small enough to leave the nucleus. Remember, we called it messenger RNA earlier. Well, that's because this messenger RNA takes the genetic information from DNA and brings it into the ribosome where protein synthesis begins. And this leads us into translation, which is our final process of protein synthesis. Third, during translation, the mRNA brings the transcribed message from the nucleus to the ribosomes to make proteins. The message that mRNA is carrying is read in threes by the ribosome. This three nucleotide message is called a codon. Another type of RNA called transfer RNA, or tRNA for short, recognizes and binds to its corresponding codon in the ribosome with its anticodon. The tRNA then retrieves the corresponding or matching amino acid from the cytoplasm to the end of the growing amino acid chain. Let's use our transcribed message from transcription as an example. The messenger RNA brings the AUG AAG UUU UAG message to the ribosome. The ribosome reads the message in threes, which we said are called codons. The codons would be AUG, then AAG, then UUU, then UAG. So for each set of three nucleotides or codons, transfer RNA matches the correct anticodon. Remember, with RNA, adenine matches with uracil and cytosine matches with guanine, or A to U and C to G. 
This means that the correct transfer anticodon for AUG would be UAC, the anticodon for AAG would be UUC, the anticodon for UUU would be AAA, and then the anticodon for UAG would be AUC. The transfer RNA then retrieves the correct amino acid from the cytoplasm to match the transcribed code from messenger RNA and add it to the end of the growing amino acid chain. But how do we know which is the correct amino acid to bring back from the cytoplasm? That's a great question. And now we introduce the codon wheel and codon chart. Most of my students like using the codon wheel because they say it's easier to read, but both types will code for the same amino acid. We'll use the first codon, AUG, as an example. Let's use our codon chart first. I like to tell my students to read it as left, top, right, or first base, second base, and third base, and draw a line where all three will meet. So we will start on the left side or first base of my codon chart with A. Then we will move to the top or second base with U, and then move to the right or third base with G. Once we have located all three, I like to draw a light line to match where all three of them will meet, and that will tell me my amino acid, which is methionine. Methionine is a start codon and tells the amino acid building process to begin. Now let's use our codon wheel for the codon AUG. I like to tell my students that the codon wheel is divided into four sections and draw a line where the lines are for each section. We do this because it is important to know that once we start in a section, we will only stay in that section to find the correct amino acid. Another strategy we teach is to go from the biggest letter in that section which is in the middle and work our way out to the smallest letter in that section which is farthest outside. So go from biggest, smaller to smallest or from inside, middle to outside on your codon wheel. So we will start in that section with A in the inside which is the biggest letter in that section then move out to the smaller or middle letter which is U and then finally to the smallest or outside letter which is G. Notice that our amino acid is still methionine so it doesn't matter if you use the codon chart or the codon wheel you will still get to the correct amino acid. Now let's find the correct amino acid for the rest of our codon. AAG would code for the amino acid lysine, UUU would code for phenylalanine. UAG would code for stop, which tells the protein to end the amino acid chain now. So the amino acid chain for the transcribed messenger RNA message AUG, AAG, UUU, UAG would be methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, and the stop codon. And there you have it folks, we have a fully assembled protein which is made by amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. Our protein synthesis journey is a huge success. And that's our video for today. Now let's set your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining the essential dogma of protein synthesis. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code in the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take our video quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results in your proficiency sheet and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day. Dance off, bro. Me and you. Come on. What are you doing?